weather. Day two. We're back after him, man. I'm a little gun shy. Feelings hurt a little bit. Because my plan didn't work out. That's fishing. You know, that happens a lot of times. You always got to be prepared for the worst. And so the good news is we got another day to, to shoot at him. So we'll switch it up today some. And then we're going to check on some, some shallow fish again. I mean, the conditions have changed. We've got a storm coming in. It's 70 degrees right now. Low pressure. Them largemouth really should be snapping. But like I said, man, I'm a little apprehensive to go completely dedicate my day to them just because of what happened yesterday. But uh, I think we're just going to mix it up a little bit. I think we're going to run down the pond, fish a little shallow, fish a little offshore, do some scoping, mix it up, just kind of roll with the day. Just kind of let the day come to me and whatever I get a clue in on, just roll with that. So that's really my plan. Fish hard all day, and it is what it is, man. Again, happy to be here. Red Crest 2024, day two, let's go. day two. Good luck to you. Look at that. Two pounds, one ounce. Yes, sir. Two pounds, one ounce. <laughs>
wrapped up period one tough 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 i did have three bites three scoreable bites two of them got off one got off right beside the boat the other one got off on the initial hook set i'm out here just panning around trying to look for some but there's so much pollen in the water i can't see much on my live scope so we might do this for another 15 20 minutes and i may just scrap this whole deal too and just go back largemouth fishing man and just uh just hope for the best that's all you can do um fish hard it's just it's just been one of those weeks for me you know it's just so far and i'm, I'm staying positive as anything can happen you know but it uh it's just been it's just been tough fishing so that's where we at right now we got about a couple minutes till lines in and uh let's see if we can't track a few now Right on. Three pounds, eleven ounces. Three eleven. Old spotted bass. Look at that picture of it. That's cool. What? Three eleven. Thank you, man. He didn't go to one fourteen or fifteen. Quickest two. 
bites. Almost a full one. First two. Alright guys, so we just wrapped up period two. Another very tough period. Uh, but we ended with two right there at the very end. One of the ones I was complaining about yesterday, I was just telling my official um, that got off, came and bit my float worm in the morning. I didn't know he was on the bed. Uh, was that 311 that I just caught. So that's cool. End up putting him in the boat, you know. Uh, so that, that was cool. And I caught a two pounder off that dock over there. So yeah, that's that's cool. A couple, ba couple bites, you know. I, I know in order to really jump up in this last period, I probably need to run back down the lake and, and live scope the last period. But I'm just afraid I'm gonna get in guys' way that are toward the top, and I really just don't want to do that, man. Um, just ain't it ain't really my style, man. You know, because I know I know what guys are doing to catch them, uh, and I even know pretty close just from running around wh where they're at, you know. And you just don't want to do that. You don't want to be that guy. It's, that's, how, that's how guys get a bad name for themselves. So I think I'm gonna leave that alone and just go go fishing the rest of the day see what we can put together Pounds nine ounces. Two nine. That work. Another spot. I'm a bit. Thank you, buddy. Lines out. End of day two. No, you're fine, man. Got a lightning tracker. I took a screenshot. 
this one out. I live, I live down in Mobile now, so. Oh, wow, you, you're away from home. Well, folks, this melon is a lot better than Lay Lake was to me this week. I got snake bit, man. I got snake bit. I'm frustrated a little bit, but it's all good, man. You know, when I when I started uh, this whole YouTube thing, man, <clears throat> these are the times that honestly I was most, not excited, but the times that I wanted to show you guys because I know there's a lot of young cats that watch my videos that are inspiring bass pros, right? You need to be able to see this and understand this because this is the inevitable. If you want a tournament bass fish for a living, you're going to take L's. You're going to take lips on the, lumps on the chin. You're going to take frustration, adversity, all of these things that equate to a poor finish in a tournament. Probably one of the most frustrating tournaments I've ever fished. Um, for those that you know watch the practice videos, you guys watch the the progression leading up to the tournament. I went into this one feeling pretty good, man. I had a lot of bites shallow. Weather started popping, high 70s, 80s. Water temp jumped up into the mid 60s. I'm like, they're gonna be sliding for sure. Had a full moon last week. Everything was lining up for them fish to, to move up shallow. And then in practice, I had a lot of bite shallow. Long story short, it just didn't happen. And I was stubborn. Um, I thought it would. I thought I, I thought I had enough areas. I could run here, I could run there. I bounced around here, bounced around there. And I did all of that and it just did not pan out. Well, day two, I'm like, all right, I should be able to just scrap all that. I'll go down the lake, I'll go down and in live scope, areas where I caught fish, and uh, and we'll be able to do that. Well, I get down there in that zone, and sure enough, that's where a lot of the leaders are. And so there's some some unwritten rules in the game, um, and that's one of them. Although I had been fishing there in practice, and I had waypoints there, etc. I'm not about to roll up on guys in the top five. You know, I look over there and I see, you know, whoever, Michael Neal, uh, Connell, uh, uh, the, the young guy, uh, Emil, you know, all these guys that are catching them, right? I just, I just, I'm not gonna do it. And so I scrapped that too and just went back to, to shallow fishing, which led in a, in a, in a, in a, led me to a poor finish, man. So anyways, the, 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 the moral of the story is you're gonna take L's and it's, it's okay. And I'm actually happy that the, this one happened in the championship. I know that sounds crazy, but there's no points involved. If this was a regular season event and I finished like eight from the bottom, which in, on tour is like a 72nd or something like that, that hurts. That hurts big time. Um, because now you're killing yourself points for making Red Chris for the following year. So made a couple bucks, learned some more lessons, the ever revolving door of tournament bass fishing where you're constantly learning, experience that. And uh, it's all good, man. Get back in the Ranger, hop out on the lake, get better, roll to the next tournament, which is Del Hollow, and do better. And that's just all it is to it, man. So I hope y'all learned something from all my videos, all my content I put out. There's gonna be highs, there's gonna be lows, but through it all, I'm always gonna be smiling, I'm always gonna be positive. I'm a blessed dude. I get the tournament bass fish for a living. Zero complaints, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all check us out, follow along, like, subscribe, all the jazziness. I'm going to get back to this melon because he's fire, like I was telling y'all. And uh, we're going to keep it popping. See you.